Before we begin today's video, I need all of you guys to do me a favor. Stop whatever it is you're doing, jump down into the comments right now. I want you all to say hello to six-year-old Brianna Valenzuela from Ilocos Norte in the Philippines. She watches all of my videos. She gets super excited about all of this. Let's make her day. Everybody drop down there and say hello to her. I'm not starting this video until you do. I'm waiting. I have made my way into Hanoi. I am staying in the most awesome little area. The name of the neighborhood is called Nyok Ha. And I am gonna run around today. I'm meeting up with a friend of mine. I'm gonna show you a ton of very cool eats around here in this little neighborhood today. This is Kevin. We are at a place called Fobo Gakgao. Uh, this is over by the Noka Market here in the Noka neighborhood. And Kevin is from the Go Arrive Vila Den family. Is that correct? Vila Den, did I say it right? Okay, Kevin's from Holland originally. He's married to a Vietnamese. He lives here in Hanoi full time. Let's check this out. Uh, this place I've read a lot about, tons about it right here. Uh, what we've ordered here is the Tai Chin, which is rare beef that's done with it. You saw she was making it up in there. Or if you haven't seen it yet, you're getting ready to see it. And I have not done pho on camera since I've been in Vietnam. And the reason being is, is like it's just so common. You see it everywhere. I've eaten a ton of it. I just haven't done it on camera. So we're going to dress these things up here. Do you spend much time over in this area in general or? Uh, this area not particularly, but there's uh, like every area has the same things. So the same restaurants you can find anywhere in the city. There are specific places that have a particular kind of food. Uh, there are areas that are known for it, that have the, they're supposed to have the best restaurants. So you can basically find anything everywhere in the city. And how long have you been living here now in Hanoi? I've uh, been here in total six years. And you like living in Vietnam? I'm very happy here. Yeah. Very happy here. The I am extremely amazing. jealous of you. I am super excited to be here. I love this little neighborhood that I'm in. Uh, I just got here from Da Nang. And where I stayed at in Da Nang, uh, super touristy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of people that looked like me and I don't really want to see that when I travel. All right, let's give this a shot. First, let's show to go after their bra. Here we go. Oh yeah, pretty good. You can see the very slow roasted bones that are making up the broth there. A little hidden ginger and star anise in it. That's nice. That is a very very Singaporean thing. I haven't seen anybody do that else in anywhere else in the world. Oh, really? Are they um, Malaysia, Malaysia and Singapore are big for that, where they use their spoon. Right. For a little bit of noodles, so they can get the broth and everything in. Exactly, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it made sense to me in Malaysia because it's a lot of curries and stuff like that. So you right. want to soak up that curry. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody here do it in Vietnam. Yet. All right, it's, uh, that's what my wife told me to do. <laughs> really? So it's probably. And it should I be guess, a big thing. Yeah. Here's the thing: like I've been in Vietnam for two months. Like, I, what would I know about it? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just never seen anybody do it. I looked over, I saw you doing that. So what I'm what I'm talking about with him doing there is uh, putting a little bit of noodles, a little bit of meat, whatever else into it, and then dipping into the broth so we can go at it that way. I've only ever seen that in Singapore and Malaysia. Me, I just kind of go in and I just make a big old mess of myself. Yeah, that's the thing that happens if you uh, take out the noodles. Like either it will slip through your chopsticks or it will start splashing around. Slop around all over my shirt. Exactly. It happens every single time and I don't care. <laughs> oh, fair enough. All right, here we go. <laughs> Fall for me is one of those weird dishes. For me, it's either hit or mess. It's like it's good or it's just not that great. And I've had some pretty just bland versions here in Vietnam so far. I'm extremely lucky right now that this is the place we chose to come for my first photo in Hanoi. Free that some uh, chili. Need a little bit more spice. I have raw chili in here, but yes, let's add some 
chili sauce as well. Why not? It's actually an amazing process. She fills up the little ladle in there with a little bit of the rare beef and it just dips into the broth. Big vat of broth that they have simmering away over there. Uh, just dips it in there for a couple of seconds, pulls it back out. It is so flavorful. I'm telling you now, you really have to be careful with the chilies here in Vietnam. Because these little things are spicy. Yes, they are. It's always the little chilies that do but, it. Yeah, they, they just light you up. Like, I am on fire right now. I guess that's a good question for you. As a Westerner, everybody always wants to say pho. Is it actually just pho? Or is it pho? There's a bit of a, like a twirl on it. Like the sauce. Really? So it's the it's up down with the pho as well. Really? I get so confused with the, like, I'm still doing my best to try and pronounce some of these things. It's not easy. Are you fluent? Um, in uh, some areas, <laughs> I um, I get around quite well. But if you um, if you put me in um, middle of nowhere, like some business environment, then it's gonna be. Um, it's a quite different story. And, and quite difficult. <laughs> Even after five years still and marriage of Vietnamese. Yeah. So there you go. My three months here. Don't give me a hard time for not picking up the language. <laughs> I'm trying, I promise. Vietnamese is a tonal language. So they have six different tones in Vietnam. And that like makes a world of difference. If you use the wrong tone, you're immediately saying a completely different thing. But so that's uh, that's what the challenge is. So the thing though, if you put everything on a spoon, it takes a lot longer. <laughs> Sometimes it's just yeah, it definitely takes a lot longer. Just, uh, I just make a mess of the shirt, the shorts, and just yeah, cares. fair enough. Yeah. I can wash it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. The problem for me is like I'm just a glutton. So it doesn't matter. So like you put food in front of me and I can't stop oh. eating. If it's something that I really like, like I can't stop eating. All right. I just keep going. <laughs> well, fair enough. That's good white stuff. Oh, wow. What's funny is even with all the chilies and the chili sauce that I put in here, you still get star anise that's coming through on it. You can taste it. It's distinct. It's, been, it's there. It's strong. It's powerful. It's delicious. Pho Bo Ga Cao, best pho I've had in Vietnam so far. I love this little neighborhood, No Ka. Let's go see what else we can get into. Next stop we're doing here, this is a place called Bun Cha 108. Her Bun Cha is out of this world up until now, Saigon had been my favorite buncha. Mm. Well, I'm gonna go with this again, we're gonna let you know. I've ordered another one here. Uh, this is called Bunda Mantap. What it is, it's uh, fried tofu and vermicelli. And then you get this little beauty right here. I don't know how well that's gonna show up for you. That is the mantap. That is a fermented shrimp paste. This is where I'm gonna make fun of the guy that lives here in Hanoi a little bit. Uh, he's not a fan of the shrimp, shrimp paste at all. He doesn't like the mantap. So what we've did is we've asked him to bring out some nook mom for him, which is the sweet fish sauce. So he's gonna go with that, and we're gonna give all of this a shot. The spicing of the broth here is very important for uh, Bung Cha. The spicing of the broth? Yeah. You see the, like, the peppers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, like, in some places, like uh, less popular places, um, they will have less, they will just have the, the broth, and it just loses a lot of uh, the, Essence of the, of the flavor. Oh, the flavor itself because you're losing uh, pepper and everything else. That's there. right, yeah. Her meats that she does with the bun cha here. I love it. Yeah, like you get the fresh char from the grill that she right. does. Oh, perfect, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. it's fantastic. Yeah, that's what I found about a lot of the food in uh, Saigon. They often make it like either too sweet or too spicy or too salty. I find it often like too much of one particular flavor. One particular flavor. Where I feel that in Hanoi they balance it better. Okay, you live here. Tell me what you think. It's very good indeed. Right. Right. It's but perfect. Boon is uh, seemingly simple, but it still needs to have um, the the structure. A little bounce to it. That, exactly. Her, her meatballs are fantastic. There you're gonna get a little bit of fatty bits with. Uh, no. Yeah. Nice. Really soft. Yeah, her bone job is fantastic, and she is the sweetest woman in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the thing with Bun Cha, like how can you ever go wrong with this? It's like, for me, this, this is one of the perfect dishes in Vietnam. Like it's just amazing. Great. And I think uh, it was, it's really exciting to have it here in Hanoi. Uh, and I came here the other day with my girlfriend. Uh, she's since flown back to the Philippines, but I told you guys before, her favorite thing in the world, she eats it like three times a week. So we found this place, we came here, it's not very far from where we're staying, we were staying at, and it's just delicious, just amazing. Nice char grill on that. You can see those meatballs that she has there. Wow, her meatballs have this perfect ratio of fat to lean meat on. Yeah, it, this is just unbelievable. Yeah. All right, Kevin, go around. Where did this all come about? How did this start for you? Um, I think we started about three years ago, might be four by now. Um, I always used to travel a lot, uh, together with my wife as well when we got together. And I've always made videos of my trips and always enjoy uh, editing it into like something that I would enjoy watching like when I get older to look back at my, my trips, my experiences. And at some point, my wife actually mentioned, uh, like, why don't we like set up a YouTube channel and film it for that, upload it on YouTube, and see if we can also help other people find uh, things that, that we have found that might be interesting for them. And you just like such an obvious thing to do because we were already making making the videos. How do you feel about your YouTube journey overall so far? Is it like is it a lot more than you thought it would be? And it is. It, it really is. All the editing has to be a lot more it's professional. Lot. Yeah. And it takes up a big chunk of your time, especially if you go to a place where there's a lot to be seen. Yep. It's uh, it takes up a lot of work. The editing is uh, like five times more than the actual going out and about going out filming. Absolutely. The editing takes five times as long to do as it does to actually film it. And you also work a full-time job too, yeah? That too, yeah. yeah. And your that's wife also works, yes? That's right, yeah. And that's you right. just had a baby. That too, yeah. So it's a long thing. So this whole day is ending up something about to do with kids. So there you go, he has a baby too. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any plans right now for any new content coming out or anything else? Uh, spending time now in uh, Vietnam. Um, traveling around Vietnam a lot. Uh, making a lot of videos here. Actually, I'm gonna be traveling back to Europe in what is it, April now, two months. Traveling uh, back home to the Netherlands and traveling around there and pick a little bit of Germany and make some more videos there. If you look right above there, above Kevin's head, there's a link for his channel right there. If you click on that, you can go check out his YouTube channel. It's up there somewhere, I promise. <laughs> I'm loving this buncha. I've got to get in and try this bunda. <laughs> That was so good. Well, Kevin goes away here at his bun cha. I am going to go after this. This is bun dao mam I'm going to grab my phone here so I can remember the guy's name. So at HDNG3245, you can see his uh, name right up here. Uh, as recommended that I try this dish here in Hanoi. They have it here. I'm getting it. Let's give it a shot. So it's tofu. It's fried tofu uh, with some vermicelli. And once again, you have this mum tam here, which is a fermented shrimp base. So let's see if it's anything like the mum nem. It's shrimpy. It's shrimp paste. So it's, it's, it's normal to me. It doesn't smell out of the ordinary. So if you've never had a fermented shrimp paste, usually, not going to say always because I haven't had this yet, usually it's extremely salty. But there's this beautiful umami flavoring to it as well. Going straight into... I'm not, I'm not scared. Here's the thing, I'm not scared. I like shrimp baits. Let's go. Super salty. Oh yeah. But there is a beautiful umami to it. There's these deep flavors that come from a good fermented shrimp base. Wow. That is awesome. You're not a fan of fermented shrimp base, eh? What is it about it that gets you? Um, is it just the saltiness or it's, um, is it the flavor? Is it the thought behind it? 
Maybe it's a little bit of all those things. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's mainly the flavor, ultimately, that um, uh, does it for me. No, that's delicious. For many foreigners, so be careful when you uh, give it a go. Do give it a go, but do it uh, like not with the amount that Jeff did it. Yeah, there are a month on, you probably are going to have to develop a taste for it because it is quite strong. I think it's the same with like the mum nem. I think there's a lot of foods that are like that though. This smells delicious to me. Like this does not smell bad. The mum nem. Oh, it's different. Yeah, that's, it's yeah. just like it does not smell good. And every time I smell it, I go, I am not eating this. I feel like I'm gonna, you know. Yeah, that's a strong scent. Never happens for me. Just go with a little bit of the mum tom on here. That's a great flavor. Oh, it's delicious. This is Chong and her mother. They are the owners of Bucha 108. If you are here in Noka, come check this place out. It is unbelievably delicious. Got one more stop I'm going to make with Kevin. Let's go see what we can get into. I brought Jeff out to this place called Tui Siao, where we're going to eat Beng Siao. I'm quite familiar with this place. Uh, I've had good experiences with it. So I hope uh, the same will go for you. Okay, Beng Siao. Uh, for me, I have avoided putting this on camera since I've been in Vietnam. Kevin assured me this place is fantastic. I've had these throughout the country. I haven't been the biggest fan of the world of them. They've been too greasy every time I've had them. So I'm excited to try the one he's recommending here. This little baby right here. This is the Ben Chow. And the Ben Chow is a Vietnamese pancake. It's stuffed with all kinds of stuff. If I'm being completely honest, I have no idea what's inside of this. Kevin? So it's got uh, pork inside, uh, some bean sprouts, onion, and shrimp. Those are the main ingredients. Some places will put some other things uh, along with it. And I see they brought rice paper wraps out here. So I'm assuming that you're supposed to take the rice paper wraps? Yeah. Make right. a race with it. Yeah. Exactly. Rice paper wrap. Make a wrap with it. <laughs> well, you guys saw Kevin make one up. I've got one rolled up here now as well. Uh, I got a little nook mom here. So we're going to give this one a shot. We'll see what I think of this one. Here we go. First thing I notice about this one here, uh, the wraps are actually a nice touch. All the fresh veg and everything you get mixed in there just changes everything up with it. The ban xiao itself, not greasy. Every other one of these I have had have been extremely greasy, like soggy greasy. Not that good. This is super crisp, super crunchy. Beet sprouts popping through on it. These are amazing. Like, what are you guys doing here in Hanoi? Is your wife gonna be mad at you when you don't eat dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> so the wonderful gentleman you see back behind me, he is the owner of Tui Xiao. <laughs> That's the name of it. I couldn't pronounce it for anything in the world. The Ban Xiao here is awesome. It's absolutely delicious. If you're in Noka, come check this place out. Kevin has to get home to his wife and his baby right now, but I got more shit I'm gonna show you. Let's get going. Kevin's had to go home after a bunch of eats with him. I am back in my little neighborhood right now and I'm stopping off at one of my little favorite cafes. This is Cafe Daksa. Here at Cafe Daksa. This is like my favorite little cafe. Like I'm staying literally like hundred meters down this little alleyway here so this isn't my first time here the Vietnamese espresso here um, speaking with Khan who is the owner and his wife and his wife's father actually they roast all of their own beans and everything else to make here at the cafe it's one of my little fa favorite cafes in this area here so let's go first after the espresso because this is the first time I've had this here You get a great nuttiness to it. It's an extremely strong coffee that they use. And it's beautiful. 
Oh yeah. Going for a little bit of a palate cleanser with a eucalyptus tea. It has almost like, a, it's, it's a very refreshing tea that they made, but it, it has almost like a smoky and extremely nutty flavor to it. But it is a perfect palate cleanser. So these here are the ones that get me every time. When I'm sitting at home by myself, it's whatever ground coffee that I can buy and I just use, I just go straight black coffee. I don't use sugar. I don't use milk or anything else. Uh, but with the Vietnamese coffee here, it is a strong black coffee that they do here. And a little bit of Su Dai shows you a little bit of that when she's pouring it into the glass there. It makes it extremely sweet. It's iced down. It's a hot day. It's beautiful. It's so good. And I like it because the coffee is really strong. You go to the big chains here in Vietnam and they're like sweet drinks. Uh, it just tastes like uh, coffee flavored sugar. At that point here you get a deep coffee flavor to it. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with motorbikes. There's a bunch of them that are going by here. I'm in a little louder. But this is beautiful. Oh, that's so good. That's it here for Cafe Doc San. This is Khan, the owner. Him and his wife run an amazing little coffee shop here. If you guys happen to come into the Nyoka here area, come check this place out. It's awesome. Let's go get some more food. And as you're walking these little alleys here, you just see food stall after food stall. There's tons of stuff that you can get around here. Now, Let's go up here. We're going to get some sweets. Uh, hi, uh, Su Kem Dai. And Mo Ta Kem Min Kak Lao. Is that correct? Oh. So I guess I should tell you guys the name of the bakery. It's the Min An Bakery. Uh, I believe it's bakery. I'm not sure. It's called Min An. I will leave a link down in the description below. So this first thing you see here before me, this is the uh, Su Kem Dai. And what Su Kem Dai is, it's, it's a cream puff. Kem uh, means cream, so it's a little like eclair or a cream puff, stuffed with cream, and they're delicious little things here. <laughs> oh wow, that is so good. I love this bakery. Once again, I'm like 30 seconds away from where I'm staying in my Airbnb over there. This place is awesome. I attempted to order in Vietnamese here, my Vietnamese is god awful. Uh, so this year, I don't even remember. I was reading the sign when I was trying to order it there. I don't even remember what these are called. I'm ducking out real quick. Okay, I'm never going to be able to pronounce this for you right now. I butchered it the first time. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and eat every one of these right now. But I just want to jump into one of them for you. Because they're just little cakes and they are delicious. Right, I'm gonna get the one out that I can pull out easily, which is none of them. They have little spoons here. I'm gonna grab one of these and what we'll do is I'll jump into a little bit of each one. So it's just a little cake is all it is. It's just a little yellow cake with cream on it. What I love about the desserts here, they're not this overloaded processed sugar flavor that you get in North America. It's very light. This one, a little bit of coconut on it. Oh man, this is awesome. I, mean, I literally love this bakery. And if you guys can't tell, there's like three things that I can't live without on a regular basis. And that's beer, sweets, and coffee. Just delicious little chocolatey, toasted coconut all over it. These are awesome. All right, last one here. This is the fourth one. I'm gonna give you a little bite of that one. Yeah, once again, you don't see a lot of tourists around here, but if you guys happen to make your way here, Google link down in the description for this place. This place is awesome. Got one more thing I'm gonna try to show you. These little stands, you see them all over the place as you're walking the alleys here in Yoka. Uh, this is uh, Tit Yo Kue. What Tit Yo Kue is, it's uh, like Su Yuk that you would find in Malaysia or in China. It's roasted pork belly. Like, how could you not want to eat that? Let's get this right now. Here we go. 
Stick your quay. Stick your quay. Help quay. Stick your quay. All right, here you go, roasted pork belly. You guys know my love of roasted pork belly. Help quay. Holy mother of God. Just fatty. Melt in your mouth. Wow. That is unbelievable. Look, he's holding it out for me to grab more. That is just unbelievably delicious. Beautiful lean bits of pork in there. Fattiness that just melts in your mouth. Crispy outside edges. Whoa. That little bit there, he just gave to me there. I'm getting another 100 grams of this because this is unbelievably delicious. Got my bags of food here. I have the roasted pork. I got some sweets there. I think I've had enough to eat for one day. That's going to wrap this video up right here. You guys make sure you turn in next week. See what else I get up to.